Hey, it's MK and I am here with Stitches and Stencils that almost wasn't. I'm also playing along with Off the Board and I am scrap lifting an amazing layout by Rebecca Moore, who is Precious Pages Paper Crafts um, on YouTube, I think as well as on Instagram or just on Instagram and she's Rebecca Moore on, I'm not sure, I'll have to double check that. Either way, there's a link down to her social medias down below. I picked out these couple branding strips. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be doing. I just picked them out because of the, what A, they were on my desk and B, color wise. Um, so just sharing you guys where the branding strips came from. I have a, another mock-up wood piece that I have for um, just, uh, but something fun to do and then a cut apart that I believe came I don't know in all honesty where that cut apart piece came from I have a couple pieces that are from simple stories and from scrap and happy studio and then I have these uh, weird stickers they're like see-through stickers that have this iridescent no iridescent holographic gold um on them, which I think match my paper really well. I'm going to map my two photos on this white cardstock. And then this is my paper that I picked out from Stampin' Up! And I believe it was last year's um, little paper kit that they came out with, or uh, one of the paper kits that they came out with last year. So I'm not really sure if it is available anymore. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to cut out little rips of paper like Rebecca did on her layout, but I'm going to back them with this corrugated cardstock that, um, truth be told, is has been flattened. Um, I took my fingernail and I took the side of my desk. I did everything to flatten it so that way they weren't all going in the same direction. I wanted that texture. But by the time that I am done, uh, well with my little rips and they're not going to be as big as Rebecca's because I definitely wanted them to blend in a little bit with my background. Um, there, It's really not going to be seen that there's a whole bunch of different uh, waves to this corrugated paper. So uh, like I said, this is stitches and stencils that almost wasn't because as you can tell, I had no stencil to share with you guys. Um, in fact, when I get to the stencil part, um, I thought that I was done and I believe <laughs> in all honesty, um, I felt like I was completely done with this layout. Um, and then I realized that this was supposed to be a stitches and stencils layout. Um, so you get to see it transform into a stitches and stencils layout, even though, um, I completely forgot about it and I apologize. So I'm going to keep working with my little rips and tears. I use my X-Acto knife to cut a slit into my paper, and then I'm just using my fingernails to roll the paper back. Um, so that way I don't have to um, rip any bits and pieces. Now, at first I thought it was going to be clever to have a wave. And then when I started uh, rolling up the first one, I thought, oh, no, that's just going to be a bigger slit in my paper. And it's going to be a bigger hole, which will be fine because then my um, I get to see a little bit more of the um, corrugated paper. So for my corrugated paper, I'm going to glue them down or attach them to the back of my page using tape and tape but then I'm also going to um, put them down with washi tape now at first I thought that this was going to be just fine and this is how I was going to leave my layout but then when I saw how badly my page that is actually going to be sh 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 when I flip my page over let's let's start with that when I flip my page over I can see all the bulk that came from having the corrugated behind my paper even though I did a as best as I could to try to smush it all down. Uh, it didn't work really well, um, as at least as well as I thought. So all of this washi business was basically a waste of time because I do end up putting down um, just a random piece of paper that I had at hand um, as the back of my layout, right? I end up gluing my, my whole layout to another piece of pattern paper. Um, that in all honesty, I didn't think I was gonna use ever again, and I'm not gonna to be too sad <laughs> if uh, you know it just gets to be used as the back. So I don't make you watch me put every single one of my my pieces of cards, um, chipboard, uh, nope, <laughs> corrugated paper down. Um, so yeah, that this is what I end up with, and I like it a lot more because like I said, with just the washi tape, um, my page got a little warped, and the Stampin' Up! 
cardstock or the Stampin' Up! pattern paper is not as thick as the Close to My Heart paper was. Not that I'm comparing anything, um, you guys. I'm, I'm just not. It's just that this paper was super thin and I did have to give it some sort of stability. And instead of using cardstock, I just used a pattern paper that uh, I knew I wasn't going to use anywhere else, right? I probably would have just used it as backing my photos. Not a big deal. So um, here I am, you know, I'm really, really happy with how the rips and tears look in the background. And now I just need to need to decide where I want the rest of this layout to go. And I know that I want something to go behind my title, which is home away from home. You can see the top of our cabin there um, at June Lake. And then behind there, I'm taking a picture of a waterfall. So the, the very top of the photo is a close up where, um, well, or a closer view of the waterfall from where I was standing. And then um, the one down below is just where you can see the tip of our cabin. And then I noticed the waterfall in the background. So I really did like that as well. Um, so I, I named it Home Away From Home, even though it's not a picture of our home away from home. Um, but it, it's our view, right? That basically when it comes to this cabin at June Lake, that's all there is to it is the view, the, the cool air in hot August. Um, it is just fabulous to be honest. Um, I just cannot tell you enough about how it, it we sleep in the cabin. That's it. We don't spend a whole lot of time in the cabin. Other than that, we are not, um, in it at all. I do have a couple of pictures that um, the kids' grandma took of us in the cabin. And so um, eventually, <laughs> but it doesn't look like a cabin, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, what's it supposed to look like, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't realize I had those pictures. So they will be smaller photos um, because it's very, it, it's not it's dark by the time that we're in the cabin. We're not, you know, we spend all of our days outside. So I'm going to go ahead and color my tree line, uh, my wood veneer tree line with two different inks. I've got peeled paint for the first ink and then forest moss for the second ink. And then I decide that that was not enough. So I bring in peeled paint again. Actually, the first one might not have been peeled paint. I think it was whatever was on my, my brush, to be honest. Um, so the peeled paint wasn't bright enough. So I went ahead and got the oxide of peeled paint and decided to brush it on and it was absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use that tree line and put it in front of the die cut tree line, which I swear I cut this out, but I do not remember which paper pad I actually ended up cutting this out of. Um, because it was a whole cut apart sheet and I know it was a collection. I remember the collection. I think it was a water color um, nat national forest collection that was gifted to me by a viewer and I apologize, but I have since used the papers. I've since used all the die cuts. I have very little left and um, in all honesty, I don't, when it comes to only having one or two pieces left, I don't keep track of this piece came from all of that and then share with you guys something that might be two to three years old, right? I, I just don't think it's fair. Um, I have to apologize again for my messy fingers because this is still, they are still stained um, from the project that I did a couple days ago. <laughs> And it is taking a while for it to wash off. Now, yes, I can go and wash my hands in paint thinner and, and put all of those chemicals on my hands to get rid of the stain to make them YouTube worthy. But to be honest, I just, you know, it is what it is. I, I keep crafting. I keep going. Um, and, and it doesn't bother me having messy hands, messy fingers. Um, it, it just really doesn't bother me. All right, so here I thought I was done. I'm splattering um, some Tim Holtz uh, gold on to my layout. Thought I was done, and then I realized this is supposed to be stitches and stencils. I have no stitching, I have no stencils. So I'm gonna stitch. That's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm going to extend my uh, rips with the stitching, and I thought it was gonna be cool. Um, I, I thought it was gonna be a cool effect because I'm taking brown thread and leading into the brown corrugated um, on both sides, and then it kind of looks um, a little bit like the like it was supposed to be stitched and then the stitching started coming apart and you can see the inner bits, right? So I thought it was a good touch. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, Rebecca didn't do any stitching on her layout at all. 
Um, so it's it's a rendition of or a spinoff of what Rebecca did. But I really do like how this turned out. Now, at first I thought I needed a little bit of zigzag on there and I was going to do the zigzag. And then I thought, no, I need to figure out what I'm going to do for stenciling. So I'm going to pull out this stencil. Now, I do not remember where I got this stencil, what the stencil is all about. I don't remember anything about this stencil. So I apologize if I cannot give you guys any information on this stencil. Um, I went ahead and I added a little bit of stenciling with the forest moss onto my tree line. I kind of like that. Um, and if I didn't, I can't take it back now because it's on my layout. And if I were to do anything, it might ruin my layout. But I really did like these little star splatters from this stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and use those um, around all of my stitching pieces. And I really do like how this turns out in the end, even though it was a whoopsie that I forgot the stenciling. Um, I probably would not have known where to put all this stenciling anyways. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't have even picked this stencil, to be honest. I, I would have picked something different, but I like how it um, blends the cuts into my green background even more than I anticipated. So I'm going to add a little bit more around this tree. And then once I am done, I am done. It's officially a stitches and stencils layout that almost wasn't, you guys. <laughs> so I do like the additions. I really, really do. Um, my stenciling probably would have been a lot more crisper and sharper had I have done them ahead of time. But like I said, I probably wouldn't have known where to put them had I not done them last. So I'm pretty super happy with the way that this layout turned out. I really am. Um, I got to use this ripping technique from Rebecca's layout. Um, I got to add a little bit of stitching to it that uh, makes it look like the, uh, you know, the rips were supposed to be stitched together and then they're, they're popping out of their seams. I like having these little um, greenery pop out of the seams as well. It just looks like the, you know, the overgrown forest in, in all honesty. So altogether, I'm super happy with how this looks. All right, you guys. So that is what I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out. As usual, I have links down below for off the board and for um, Sandy's channel as well as Janet's channel who are my cohorts in stitches and stencils. All right, thanks again and I'll check y'all later. Bye.